You might assume after 5500 hours of speedrunning that I would have seen basically everything that this game has to offer. This couldn't be further from the truth however, it seems like every week a new discovery is being made. In order to showcase this, I'm going to focus on more recent discoveries, as well as one mystery that was just today solved that had been plaguing us for years. Get on it. Now. First, we have two new strats that make scouting the port a little bit faster. You drive and I'll spot. As you can see, climbing into the handler is quite slow. How about I run that prick over in this thing? Thankfully, an incredibly easy warp has been found. Just press F against this black thing and boom, you're in. How about I run that prick over in this thing? You gonna take me to see this freighter? Yeah, it's over here. The second new strat is pushing Floyd. We tested this strat a long time ago with third person and found it not to be faster. And if you look at the speedometer on the left, you can see why. The game constantly bounces us between 5 km an hour and 6 km an hour, preventing us from significantly pushing Floyd. It turns out that we never tested first person, which does enable us to push Floyd significantly, because it keeps a constant 6 km per hour. You can see the difference in the two strats when you get to the end, when the construction worker says you you, he does it much earlier in the first person strat. You! You! We need two guys on the handler! You! You! We need two guys on the handler! Before I show you the next new strat, I need to show you how stupid fall damage is in this game. You've covered the vents on the roof now. This building on Case in the Jewel Store has two balconies with massively different effects if you jump off them. Yeah, that's obviously not an ideal way to get down. However, if you jump down from the other balcony, a balcony that looks almost identical, completely different effect. Will do. What the fuck? Your eyes are not deceiving you. That is one sliver of damage. Obviously, the first balcony has to be that little bit taller, but it's not so substantial that the damage difference should be that extreme. It's often quite funny to fall out of buildings directly onto the top of your head and take effectively no damage. Oh man! The fuck is he slowing down? Calm it down! So with that now out of the way, let me present to you what is called the blimp strat. Here we are at the end of Fame or Shame. I move off to the left and move my camera to guarantee myself a car spawn. I also call myself a blimp that I'm going to be taking to Dead Man Walking. So the red line on this map represents the old strat where you would just take your car to Dave at Dead Man Walking. The purple line represents the blimp strat, simply flying over everything. Davey, how you doing? Michael, what the hell, man? Did you just dive out of a blimp? Are you okay? I don't know what you're talking about. Something that you may know, but I only recently learned, is that when you enter a mechanic, you can access your weapon wheel to skip all of the animations. What brings you in today? In GTA 5, it's not always obvious where you're going to respawn, should you mission fail or die. It's also not obvious when this point changes throughout the mission. However, if you know all the spawn points, you realize sometimes it's faster to fail the mission than it is to actually do what the game wants you to do. These are all the missions where we intentionally fail in the speedrun. I'll show you a few examples. Hold the perimeter. As an aside, the route I'm taking here is specific. It causes these two guys to despawn. You 
use your horn, have some respect for pedestrians. This route also prevents two enemies from spawning here. When there are only four enemies left alive, they will start flashing blue. This means you finish this section and your spawn point has relocated. The game tells you to get back into your truck, which just so happens to be your respawn point. Ortega lives near here, let's go see him. It even makes sure Ron is back in the truck and points you in the direction that you need to go. For one last example, let's go to Lamar Down. Lamar Down at first looks like a very complicated mission, having to move Michael and Trevor and shoot all these guys, many different options, but it's actually a very simple mission. Instead of entering the area where the yellow dot wants you to, you can completely ignore that and just come in via the train tracks. It's actually the fastest way to get here anyway. Following from this, rather than doing all the complicated stuff that the game wants us to do, we can just go straight to Lamar. Once you've triggered Lamar, there is in fact only seven guys that you need to kill to be able to leave. Lamar is still miles away with endless enemies between him and you, but the death of those seven guys are the condition to relocate your respawn point. Upon retrying the mission, Lamar is warped to you and all of the enemies have despawned. It's a simple matter of reacquiring your car and driving back to the city. Shit, homie, you all right? So, failing so that you can succeed. This is fairly simple stuff, but here's where the mystery comes in. Throughout all the years that we've been doing this, sometimes we'd run into a bug that would occur at the end of any mission that we failed. Here is what that looks like. Only, the only reason I will travel outside of this country is for TwitchCon, which I'll probably never go to because it costs too much money. GDQ, which I'll probably never go to because I'll never get uh, accepted. Or ESA, which I'll probably never go to because it's too expensive. Ah, <gasps> uh, Run's dead. Basically, there was a tiny, tiny chance that we could get warped to a hospital as we were completing a mission. We would occasionally see a frame that looked like this. It turns out this bug is caused by failing a mission and then dying before you actually reload back into the game. Hey, what's up, Simeon? My dear boy, so good to see you. So good. An easy way to showcase this is using C4 on Franklin and Lamar. I place the C4 down, I kick the wall to mission fail, and then I press G to blow myself up. What are we waiting for? So I have now failed the mission and then died while in that mission fail state. Now when I complete the mission... Man, I can't with your ass for a while. One of the most surprising things about this bug is that it doesn't work on the most recent patch. It has been patched out, which is unusual for Rockstar. But for us speedrunners, who knows where this is going to be useful now that we know how this mechanic works. Only time will tell, I suppose. And that draws this video to a close. I've got to say, I appreciate the support that you guys have shown me on the previous videos, and I will continue to make more of these videos as long as they keep doing well amongst the YouTube audience. Before I go, I felt bad in the first video that I didn't spend more time getting a very good run of break boosts so that I could show you how fast you can actually go. So here is a clip from my stream where I reach 532 kilometers per hour. Well ahead of you. Asshole. Then the...
Oh, I actually, oh, wow, I got it. I got that one too, 530. Nice. 